so far we were looking at the native hana modeling native hana data warehousing and also we have seen s4 analytics in the recent uh, topics we also covered data provisioning uh, parts which are uh, slt data services and etc so data warehousing is database plus um, where our modeling is called data warehousing. So we have seen native data warehousing. Now we are going to see the data warehousing in BW. So uh, we are using HANA uh, with respect to HANA database. So that's going to be the uh, the topic uh, for the discussions in the next coming sessions. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's start the the roadmap with the roadmap. So as most of you know, this is BW powered by HANA or BW for HANA, these are the different names what we have seen in the evaluation of SAP BW system. So you can see the first one is 7.3 powered by HANA. So initially it was given in 2012, 2012, just to improve the performance uh, of the reporting and analytics. That is the That is how HANA got introduced into BW initially. Um, before ECC and then ECC was also introduced later. So 7.3 was the earlier uh, release of BW system which was uh, available on HANA. And then 7.4 powered by HANA, some more simplification and some more objects came in during this 7.4 uh, powered by HANA like ADS was open ODS views and composite providers got introduced in 7.4. So that is called simplification and the BW modeling Eclipse tools also got introduced in widely during the 7.4. There was a lot of simplification happened in 7.4 version. And then we have 7.5 powered by HANA, uh, which is the uh, not very old, uh, but the last two years, I would say last two to three years, it was very, it got it released in 2000 late 2015 and got popular in the latest uh, in times, recent times. So BW powered by HANA and there is something called BW for HANA add-in. This is not BW for HANA add-in. This is a, like a um, add-on to your BW system so that you are getting ready for BW for HANA. Okay, that is a starter pack or enhancement pack, whatever you can say. That's a separate installation on your BW 7.5 to make it ready for BW for HANA. It is not so easy to migrate it to be migrate to BW for HANA. So they introduced a starter pack, which makes the user to get comfortable with the conversion, migration, everything in this in this stage and then they can migrate it to BW for HANA. It's very, it's a bit difficult to migrate. We will see the reasons why they are suggesting to go with the starter add-on and then to my BW for HANA. The reason behind it is uh, there are so many, several objects which will not be supported uh, in BW for HANA, like our classic objects which we have used to, we were traditionally been using those objects are not going to be, it's not supported, you cannot even create them or you cannot, they're, they're going to be disabled. That means you will not be able to use them at all. So with that into the consideration, okay, uh, so you need to prepare for this BW4 HANA system uh, with the add-on pack, by, which requires at least 7.4 or 7.5 SV4 or higher, okay. So by using in this in this particular pack, you will make it your system. You will do the cleanup or whatever unnecessary objects to be uh, taken out. You will be able to do that or migrations to be done. You will be able to do that. So for example, if you wanted to migrate your standard DSO to IDSO, you will do this here. Or multi provider to composite provider, you will be able to do this here in this BW starter pack, B4 HANA starter pack. So that is the evaluation. So from 2016 onwards, BW4 HANA has been uh, released in the market and it is now available in cloud also. So it's it's on-premise or cloud also. So these are the migration paths. You can have um, BW system, 
your regular BW system running on any DB, migrated to BW on HANA, and then migrating or adding the BW4 HANA pack and then going to BW4 HANA as described here. Or you are having some BW system on it running on any DB and then do the system consolidation and carve out. So with this one, you create a brand new system here. You don't migrate this system and you do the consolidation and carve out means you're going to, you're going to do some traditional um, data migration tools to, con to get the data from this particular system into this particular system. Uh, and then you will be using the objects of BW4 HANA in this one. So you don't really convert all your objects into um, into BW4 HANA. Okay. And then finally you got new system, completely brand new system. You don't have anything, then it's going to be new install, directly new install, no no disturbance, green green field. Okay, uh, those are the different migration options. If you can see here, this is what we am going to talk about. Here, the SCP BW uh, running on any DB. That is the initial uh, thing. And then you got migrated to BW. So what happens after this migration? See, it's going to be still on your NetViewer and support classic objects, which are going to be your standard classic DSOs and HANA optimized objects, which are HANA optimized cube and also your ADS was both. In this, at this stage, you will have both. Uh, and supports SAP HANA only, uh, because the version itself, it is called SAP powered by HANA. But it is not meant to be that uh, 7.4, you can have 7.4 here. It doesn't have to be a HANA. You can still have any DB. So, but when you, come to BW for HANA, it has to be HANA. There is no option that you will be able to use any other uh, DB when you are on BW for HANA. Similarly, S for HANA. So, so the new applications are, you don't have option to choose to go to any other database. If you are migrating, you must have your database running on HANA. Uh, because until this place, of 7.5, you can go on without migrating your HANA database, but with 7.5, with BW4 HANA, you must have the HANA database in your, at least SP12 is mandatory. Uh, SP12 or higher, which is HANA2 for this particular system. So you got the house symbol is for on-premise, you got cloud symbol is for, uh, which means this system is available in uh, in-house, in on-premise and as well as cloud. So far, BW has never been released as a cloud system. This is the first time they are releasing in cloud. Similarly, ECC system has never been into cloud. It's uh, S4 is the first version to go on cloud. So here in this case, when you add the starter add-on, you will see that it's still going to be your NetViewer, 7.4 or 7.5, 7.5 actually, because to add this pack, you must have 7.5 service pack 4. And then you got HANA optimized objects, and then you can see still here, yeah, classic objects are disabled. That means you will not be able to use the classic objects here. They're going to be disabled. Only new HANA optimized objects are going to work. So when, even before, when you are working in NetWeaver BW 7.5 with starter pack add-on, V4 pack add-on, so you'll still, be able to access, you still be able to see them as disabled objects, but you will not be able to uh, work on them because they are disabled. They can, you cannot modify them, you cannot really do anything with those objects. And then finally, B4 HANA, it's a lean ABAP application server, you can call it as itself. It's also a NetFever, but it's very lean uh, application server. And all the classic BW objects are removed. You see the difference, right? All the BW objects are removed from the system. And uh, supports only HANA optimized objects and supports only on HANA. So that is the, uh, that is the, here it's only disabled, but in B4 HANA it is completely removed itself. So you cannot really, can cannot see them. So they have to be get converted into the new uh, HANA optimized objects. So, which means, um, classic objects has no 
uh, existence in the VW4 HANA system. I mean, you cannot create them basically, that's it. So you can also see the same thing from the upgrade point of view. So you upgrade your uh, application, you migrate your database, both at one place, 7.5. Then you convert the objects into a new uh, and optimized objects during the starter add-on package, add-on. And then when you're ready with the BW4 HANA, from here you will migrate to BW4 HANA. Uh, then you are good to go. So what are the objects which will get changed? What are the successor objects in B4 HANA for the classic classic DSO or the standard DSO will be re uh, changed to data store object advanced DSO. InfoCube is being replaced with advanced DSO. Virtual provider based on DTPs. Uh, virtual provider based on HANA models are replaced. Yesterday we have seen them. You remember when we are looking at the um, S4 BPC embedded system, there are virtual providers based on SAP HANA model, uh, which are part of S4 content, but now they are going to, in B4 HANA, they are replaced with open ODS views or composite providers. Hybrid providers, which are physical providers, which contains InfoCube and data store object classic are replaced with data store objects, advanced DSOs. So at the end of almost all the virtual layer is replaced with composite provider. All the physical layer is replaced with data store of advanced DSO. And open ODSV is also virtual to directly access virtual, to replace virtual provider. But it is very rare situations that they will, people will use open ODSV because you know it, how many people will use virtual providers in BW situation? Very less. Similarly, open ODSV as well. So you're going to see more ADSOs and composite providers in your um, B B4 HANA. And you also have on the on the 3.4 3.x flow no supported in the 7.4 uh, in BW4 HANA. It's always it must be on the 7.4 uh, whatever the data sources transformations and etc. See, you can ask me, data source is a classic object or it's a HANA optimized object? It's a HANA optimized object. So I'm not saying transformations, DTPs, they are going in uh, BW4 HANA. What are the objects which you can see here in terms of data storage from the InfoCube data store project? Uh, they're all not supported or they're going to be disabled in starter add-on pack. But in B4 HANA, they're completely removed these ones. Other objects like transformations, DTPs, they're going to be exist. You need to do the transformation. It doesn't matter where, when you are in BW 7.34 or BW 4 HANA. You need to have a DTP to load the data from one object to another. You need a data source to take the data from sources. But they are optimized with HANA in BW 4 HANA. And they did not change the name for these objects, other objects. Only these objects got changed into new objects and they got new names also. Uh, new names as well as new properties. The other objects, what are not listed here, you still have them like info, spoke, or I don't know, open hubs, um, etc. Query designer tools are replaced with HANA query designer. Uh, Bex web is completely uh, removed now, it's always has to be Design Studio. Bex Analyzer is being taken out and it is going to be Microsoft Analysis for Office and Information Broadcast is replaced with BOE Broadcasting. So that's from the front end application perspective. Bex is completely decommissioned. So you'll be using um, BW Eclipse based query designer to create your queries. And then you consume those queries in the BO, um, BO tools. So these are the successor objects in B4 HANA. So it doesn't, if you are on BW 7.4 HANA, powered by HANA basically, you don't have to have these objects mandatory. You can still have the migrated objects with the with these ones. Uh, only when you are migrating to B4 HANA, then it is mandatory to have these objects in your system. So they, in order to get, get ready for these objects, you have, uh, preparation system which is going to be your B4H pack. That's the stage where you are. 
you convert all the objects into there are this is the place you have all the conversion tools to migrate your traditional objects into uh, bw objects sorry bw4 uh, hana optimized objects it's clear any questions yeah, just let me know so the architecture is changed so you know the initial architecture before lsa came in this is how it used to be one this it, there is no such such uh, layers whatever you wanted to build the uh, here uh, here everywhere you build your cubes dso's and etc for pss etc then they introduced with something called lsa architecture where you have levels everywhere this is one layer this is another layer another another and finally reporting layer uh, consolidation architecture corporate memory staging whatever you call these are the diff certain layers and then uh, there is no way that your cube can exist in this layer it, that's how they define the lsa architecture now lsa plus plus has been introduced so lsa you can do it you can do five layers you can do 10 layers because you are doing this lsa in the oracle db which is uh, cheaper hard disk so when you come to the hana it's memory it's in memory so you cannot afford to uh, make a uh, one two three four five no just one or two right so it's pretty hard to it's pretty expensive to store the data in multiple uh, different layers of the data and your model has to be very flexible so then they came up with lsa plus plus lsa plus plus means no addition to lsa it is uh, simplifying LSA architecture with with uh, less layers, uh, dynamic layers. So what is going to happen here? You can see the diagrams here. You got data acquisition layer, which is your PSA in the LSA. That is going to be replaced. There is no such thing called PS. PSA is nowhere in the LSA plus plus. So you got quality and harmonization layer uh, and the data propagation layer. These two layers are used for transformations and data integration and harmonization and then you got business transformations um, these quality transformations to combine the data from different systems business uh, different systems and different cleansing master data cleansing and, and def data quality and etc and business trans business rules transfer performed here to get the required data and then you got reporting layer and then on top of that virtualization layer here you can see that transformation layer is going to be here uh, this is your sources and then in the top of these sources you got open this is the new layer they introduced this is virtual layer again you don't physically store any data in open operational data uh, store layer this is going to be here in this layer you're going to have open ODS views which will consume the data from your source system tables and then provide the data to your final reporting application so open OD operational data store can be a virtual one it direct it's like a direct access cube in your previous uh, traditional way where you directly access the source system and provide the data to your report so that is now read virtual data provider you, you call that now it is read um, or redesigned as open operational data store layer and then next to it you got EDA, edw transformation layer where your complex transformations are going to be uh, exist in this particular particular place and then you got uh, ED, UD, EDW propagation layer where all the um, uh, schemas or different different relations between your uh, DSOs can be combined here. This is optional. If you have something like this model to be done, you will be able to do the propagation. And if you don't want to do that, you can skip that. Enterprise data warehouse propagation means you will have so many other systems providing the data into this uh, into this place it's like a staging for different source systems and then you got business this is mandatory you cannot avoid this one business transformation is mandatory edw transformation if it is just one one source system you can have you don't need to have edw transformation layer because it is used for multiple source systems combined into edw enterprise data warehouse 
So it is, this is optional. This transformation layer and ADW propagation layer is optional. But business transformations, yes, you definitely have to have it. And then architect, architected data mart layer is your final uh, data marts where you will be uh, using them for reporting and purpose. So composite provider is going to access your ideas source which are going to be sitting here and then report on those things. Okay, so in this place EDW propagation layer you also have ADS was Yeah, you also have ADS was which can be combining the data from different sources. So You know how this is being done in previously uh, consolidation DS was and before EDW uh, Transformation layer there is open o operational data store layer, which is directly to access the source system which is outside anyway we don't so basically in this in this uh, layer you're going to have one DSOS and in this layer another set of DSOS two different DSOS maximum that's it to stage to stage the data or to do the ADWS enterprise data warehousing uh, with the data consolidation transformations one layer and then business transformations in second place. If you are really a simple project and you don't have multiple systems and you can combine your quality and business transformations together, it's going to be directly one transformation layer and then directly to your data mart. It's all your uh, requirements. It's very flexible. So you can see this is the area so simple. You got the area source here and here, these two places. Okay. And open ODS views here in this place. And composite providers is going to be here. So you may also have uh, ADS was here in the initial layer as a, a right optimized DS force type, like staging. If you have enough memory, or actually it's not about memory. So right optimized DS force, they if by using dynamic tiring, they will put the data into the uh, of these dynamic. Of right optimized DSOs into you know cold memory so that you because you don't have any reporting on top of this ones right so it is it is easily okay to put the data into cold memory which is not in memory so you directly don't have the access to those um, right optimized tables in memory so because you don't you don't require them for your reporting purpose so you push you, by using dynamic tiering, you can place them in um, cold memory. So all your architect data mart layers are going to be in hot memory so that you can easily take them and then do the reporting. And EDW also, you put it in warm, either warm or hot. You will have to configure this when you are defining your DSO. Um, you will say it is going to be right optimized DSO type or it is going to be standard DSO type or it is going to be as a cube type. So based on three different layers, you're going to, when you're defining ADSOS, you will configure and you will also specify what type of storage it has to get, whether it is a hot or warm or cold, based on the reporting interactivity of that particular um, object. So because you cannot keep everything in memory, right? Uh, right optimized, standard, and then cube, all the three layers, no way you have to manage your data very effectively, especially when you're dealing with a big data. That's a big data. BW is big data solutions. You may have to have a proper uh, control on the um, big data solution. Otherwise, you're going to run into issues with memory, out of memory issues. There's going to be an open SAP course on dynamic tiering on HANA 2.0, uh, which covers native as well as BW system. And it is very helpful. Uh, it's going to be this week or I don't know um, next week I would encourage people to attend that this is uh, called a very I mean the dynamic tiering is not really improved now I mean not a very good very good stage but it is improving a lot so I think this release is giving um, a lot of uh, uh, improvements for the dynamic tiering so I uh, it's starting actually May, sorry, not in April, it is next next month. So they're going to introduce a lot of new functionalities and so many perfections in the dynamic tiering in this release. So it's already out uh, with the 
and HANA 2.0 SP03. Currently, that's the one which released yesterday uh, in the, as a database. So that database has, that version has got a lot of new functionalities and improvements in terms of dynamic TD. So you can uh, actually go through what is new in S, uh, what is new in SP02, SP03, HANA 2. So there is a blog uh, and also you can also find uh, good documentation in HANA Academy for this one. This is the latest, uh, uh, this is the latest one released, um, I think yesterday. So there is a YouTube video on what, what it is going to be done and then what is, and then you also have advanced analytical processing graphs such text analysis and everything and you may also see dynamic tiering here so that's very uh, nice topic when you're especially working on the data big data solution okay uh, yeah that's about the structure and then let's get on to the objects so any questions in the background of the migrations so migration you don't do We'll talk about migration in a few minutes when we are talking about, but you don't really do anything big. You will have a pre-upgrade checklist and you will always have a post-upgrade checklist. You will follow certain nodes when migrating or upgrading your system to this. The basis will run DMO or SEM together and it migrate the system to this one. Most uh, the complexity arrive when you are working in this add-on package because this conversion basis people cannot do. You have to understand what are the new objects are for, how the conversion, what are the errors you are getting, and how do you ma manage those errors and produce the solution to that. So this part is really uh, challenging as a consultant, but not this part. So whatever the clients so far have been gone through, or this, this, gone through this scenario, but not this scenario and this scenario. This scenario is fine, basis will upgrade it, but conversion, the second part is really uh, problematic because you need to have a BW consultant or HANA consultant who knows the stuff very well to convert your all the objects into the 7.4, no, sorry, BW4 optimized objects. Of course, there are tools given, but you may have to deal with those tools and errors, any errors coming, you have to deal them. Uh, here I will provide you a checklist before and after. I haven't done this one in uh, any of the projects. So I will not be able to provide any uh, kind of uh, experience of what are the errors going to come or what what is it going to be in the starter add-on pack. Yeah, uh, when, we, when you get to the situation, you're going to get it easily because there is no real many projects who had already gone to BW for HANA. Because of uh, so much uh, disrupt, disrupt. It is non. It, it, I don't call it as non-disruptive. It is disruptive. Disruptive. Because always we say Hana is non-disruptive, but this is in BW for Hana. It is disruptive to your existing environment. When when do I say disruptive? Is my existing objects are gone. I have to migrate them to a different, convert them to new objects. Then it is a disturbance to my existing system. So a lot of clients will not accept it because they need to do this mic conversion manually or using some tools, which may involve a lot of uh, cost and as well as, well as development from both from the vendor perspective and also from the uh, their client resource perspective. So yeah, I haven't got a, a very few projects going on BW4 HANA. If I have to, yeah, you can go through the documentation and get some up to speed with this one. But I, my objective is only till this place. So here I will be able to share some pre, uh, uh, two documents for one pre-upgrade and post-upgrade checklist, simple checklist. Uh, you will go into certain transactions and run certain notes, programs. That's it, you'll, uh, you'll be able to activate the inactive objects after migration. Pretty much simple thing. I think in 15 minutes I can cover the migration pre, -up, pre and post-upgrade checklist. That's going to be easy thing. So what is more important in this course for the next five days is what are the new objects which are going to be used in the 7.5 so that 
I can do the manual my, my manual conversion by my creating the objects in manually directly. Uh, if but since there is a conversion tool, you will be converting them to the these objects. So we're going to see how those objects are getting created, and and that's it. Once you know how those objects are getting created in this tar, uh, new system, then you when you get a chance to work in this project you will run those programs uh, the migration tools and then you will be able to understand what what is the target should target uh, the final object should behave like okay uh, so let's begin with objects in bw on hana so i'm going to start with the objects which are in the bw 7.4 and 7.5 hana not the before add on pack objects at this moment okay then then i will move on to uh so bw4 actually i will i'm going to talk about the object and all i'm say i will go i'm going to say that this object is only here and not here and many objects are here as well as here see simple hana optimized cubes are only here they are not here um advanced dso's are here 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 everywhere Similarly, open or SVS and composite providers are everywhere in right from this place. So only HANA info cubes are on here and they are out here. And similarly, HANA classic DSOs, standard DSOs are only here and gone out here. So we're going to see them in the in the next few minutes now. So I'm going to start with HANA info cube. That's my first object to start with. Uh, let's see if there is any questions. Okay, I'll take the see see I'm not really interested in 7.5 because there is no big deal in 7.5 that's what it, it doesn't matter it is 7.4 or 7.5 where what is mattered is when you are migrating to after migration are you adding the pack or not that's are you preparing for BW4 or not that's most that's where the work is involved in this in this stage uh, it doesn't matter it is 7.4 or 5 or, or 3 no use no difference really really speaking no absolutely not a big deal basis will run the migration and you will run some few checklist programs which are like already in the um, uh, you know Google or what is going to be challenging is going to be conversion. What are the errors you're going to face uh, from 7.5 to conversion pack when you're uh, adding the starter add-on pack? Okay. Okay, let's start with the HANA info cube first. Um, so, so you, you know the cube right so it's been in BW for a long time and yeah so finally there is an end to the info cubes uh, in the B4 HANA or BW starter add-on pack but since the as, as I said it whatever the implementation so far have all are BW on HANA and BW powered by HANA only they haven't migrated to B4 HANA or B not even starter add-on pack and got installed so 80 to 90 percent more than 90 percent of the projects are only on bw on hana now so far so which means you still have the queues so what how these queues got changed you got to see that um, your star schema is changed to hana optimized schema you can easily see that star schema is fact table in the center and you got dimension tables in blue color you got pink color which are going to be master data tables and then these master data SID tables will have attributes hierarchies and text in green tables that's how this extended classical BW star schema looks like so when it got changed to HANA optimized schema you got your fact table in bit middle of the place and you got your um, uh, master data tables associated uh, to this fact table so there is no dimension tables in between in directly or connecting to your master data uh, SID tables and then your each SID table will have its own ma attribute text and hierarchy tables here, which are showing in green color so that's a simplified HANA optimized queue it doesn't last for a long time that's 
but still since we are having it in 80% of the clients we are going to see this okay uh, so there are some some of the points which we can go uh, through uh, faster loading because you don't have the dim IDs dim no uh, simplified modeling and simplified remodeling easy to remove easy to add characteristics with the data existence no no issues that's yeah so I can show you an info cube happened to this system uh, I'm sorry I wanted to go into the modeling okay so uh, you're going to have a data package dimension in the HANA optimized queue so that package dimension is going to hold your request number that's the only purpose you will have the data package dimension and there is no other dimensions exist in the unoptimized queue okay and and with that uh, there is no table two tables one uh, for you got to have two tables here in the old schema one is e table and another one is f table but in the new optimized queue there is just one table exists which is going to be I don't remember it's a f or e I think it's one F so there is no such thing called data will be moving to another table when you compress something when you do compression or etc so uh, there is no cube compression don't confuse with cube compression and HANA compression HANA compression is completely different so far we HANA compression is a technique which is used for database data compression so what is cube compression uh, that is a unique capability of HANA in memory platform which is not not for not any specific for BW or ECC or S4 or CRM anything HANA compression is a highly database compression to access the data easily from the query engine calculation engine and then query analytical engine uh, the cube compression the, it's a concept it's, it's a BW concept where you compress the request number and then migrate your data from your e fact table f to e table that's what it does so here also in an optimized cube you will still compress the cube from you still compress the cube from your um, what um, from uh, then automatically request id gets deleted from the package dimension but you, there is no such thing called data will be migrated from one table to other you don't get a big huge performance in terms of query performance because uh, it is not going to help anyway but still you do the compression compression step is not going to be taken out when you're working in BW or HANA projects it's going to be still there the reason for it is you you have some of the uh, options which you will be you know when compression is triggered the, the data is moved from one partition to other partition cubes you know cubes are created with four partitions one two three four so one is for the main and then four is for the initial data so as soon as the data is loaded it comes to the fourth partition and you do the compression data moves from fourth partition to one so first partition that's how the cube is designed in HANA optimized similarly for HANA uh, there are two other tables or partitions exist by default they are uh, <coughs> um, they are uh, <coughs> sorry uh, for inventory two and three so you remember inventory is uh, having stock movements and stock uh, initial stock so in order to manage those two from compression they have two different partition all the whole concept is now completely introduced in advanced ESO inventory uh, partition one partition two compression all this stuff is being completely in, uh, introduced in advanced ESO but in order to convert it into advanced ESO you should be really having at least um, 7.5 and BW4 HANA service pack on your on your compute on your, on your system com project so if you're not having that you still have to live with your HANA optimized cubes which are on BW on HANA 
with the landscape with the format I, I am explaining which is for but I'm going to show you how the partitions are going to exist and how the dimension table and uh, exist for that particular one dimension and the fact table and SID tables link together and how the four partitions exist for that particular HANA cube and uh, yeah I, I can show you in the next tomorrow session about that in a different server okay there was some time there was a, there is to be a concept called HANA optimized DSOs as well but uh, it did not go well it was failure so they they have taken it back to standard DSO classic DSO and then eventually they are it, it also get moved to advanced DSO concept so uh, you still have standard DSO which has been migrated from native or so any other DB to HANA DB and it has no difference from your previous uh, standard object See the DSO concept did not change anyway when you are uh, working on BW on HANA. See just the database is migrated. So your classic, your, your standard DSO is going to look like as it is and your uh, all the three tables active, change log, new data table behave in the same way as they used to behave. No change. Uh, only thing is database is migrated but otherwise the functionality of the object did not get changed. However the functionality of the cube has got changed because of the dimension tables are taken out so uh, yeah when they were doing these things they did not know that they will go to bw4 hana so that's why they introduced all this thing but uh, during bw on hana uh, journey do you still require cubes the answer is no if you have uh, um, there is no performance difference between uh, working on a cube uh, as well as report. It is going to be the same performance when you are working on the DSO as well as cube. So if that is the true situation then there is no point in using cube at all. Why they have given this cube? Just to uh, keep the non-disruptive process. Non-disruptive process means um, they don't want to give a headache to the clients like just on one certain day they came and disturb the entire project no uh, that is not going to happen in that way so in that case they will give they will support the existing objects and they also uh, make them used to HANA and then after some time certain years they will slowly migrate it to a HANA related objects in going forward so cube has been given as a non disruptive object which is to keep the company projects keep running in after even migrating to BW on HANA okay but there is absolutely no difference between performance in between cube uh, running uh, query running on cube and as well as the uh, query running on DSO so when you migrate your system to HANA they don't get migrated to HANA optimized cube you will go into a T code this T code and provide the cube name and then run it and automatically that all the cubes which you are giving in this program will get migrated to HANA optimized cube and doesn't matter whether there is a data in there or not you will be able to migrate them and then uh, so as a standard migration you will not the cubes will not get migrated automatically but standard DSOs there is no structural changes they are automatically migrated to and uh, DSOs which are like uh, classical DSOs you can call them as classical DSOs okay so I'm going to show you a checklist and how these transactions tables relations for a few minutes 10 15 minutes tomorrow in the other session in another system okay uh, yeah so after the conversion no changes uh, just that you will execute some sanitary checks and execute some programs that's going that's it i will refer the migration checklist to this one and then you'll be able to follow that one yeah a little documentation of partition one partition two partition three in the cube you can see that and <clears throat> is an in uh, it is a, this is about the DSO, but anyway, this got decommissioned. I mean, even in uh, BW on HANA also, this uh, HANA optimized DSO concept is completely removed. It is it's a failure. They have taken it out.
there is there is no such thing called an optimized dso your standard dso become classical dso that's it uh, and then it is going to be advanced dso in the future but this is what they introduced initially like bw hana optimized cube which has some structure change similarly they introduced hana optimized dso with some structure change change log is going to be virtual with some kind of a view concept to access the data virtually and then improve the perf they try to improve the performance by reducing the data footprint but delta loads got really problematic so they removed this object from the system and that's it uh, yeah there is little information i have gathered um, yeah there's one basic question i always ask so uh, yeah so if you see th what is the difference between uh, working on BWDS DSO versus BWQ that's a very simple question many of the people think about I asked all the top consultants I never got an answer to this question um, because they don't know how exactly the bid I mean they means we as a BW consultants we never work into the inter underlying tables joints and etc when you are work from the Oracle data warehousing or HANA data warehousing natively, then you will understand the concept of how the BW schema exists and what is the difference between a BW and DSO in detail. Then you will be able to answer that question when somebody makes to you. So as a, that's what I'm saying. BW is is very comfortable to the people and it actually uh, reduced the person's capability of understanding the development objects and if you are really com competing with any other uh, oracle or any other um, programming developer or any from the non sap you are absolutely useless uh, especially coming from bw background uh, they cannot really they cannot as a BW consultant, you cannot compete with the the non SAP um, data warehousing programming people because of the the exposure they would have when they are working directly on the applications. So that's what I learned in the recent when you are directly working as a programmer developer on the system without having an application. Only thing you do is just cube. You you know a cube and you right click on create a cube. That's what we know. But that's not what he, he, uh, the other people do in Oracle and Java, SQL, Microsoft, and they actually design the uh, joins, they design the database, data warehouse actually by their own skill set. So that's where they un understood what is the performance, what is the parallelization, and what is the compression and etc. in very detailed way. So. As you already knew some modeling concepts of SQL data warehouse, then try to incorporate those concepts into these models, then you will understand BW uh, in a different way. But otherwise, yeah, for other people, it is very easy to learn BW, but vice versa is not really good. I mean, BW people cannot understand the other side. So yeah, this is the, you, you may have to really understand what is star schema and what is star means so how the joints will make you uh, to improve the performance of the query sometimes dso is really faster what what is multi-dimensional modeling uh, uh, i think i try to put as much as i can why do a star joint does what what does it as a star joint does you remember when we were working in hana models we got something called star joint so uh, if you understand the concept of star join there uh, similarly I have made uh, joins one after the other I can join four tables one after the other one, one using simple SQL joins one then join them then join them I can also do the star join uh, by combining five tables together at once so which one should I use as performance to improve the performance is the star join so that's where the star schema is about so uh, your DSO is going to work as the other calculation view what I was showing you join one with other one one with other one it's not going to execute the joins parallel it's going to be a sequential join with the star schema or multi-dimensional modeling you're going to run star schema kind of joins so that 
all the joints execute in parallel and you get a better performance. So each concept is you have to understand from the SQL data warehousing way, then you will get a better understanding of DSOs and cubes and anyway, there is no cubes concept now, it is all flat, there's no such multi-dimensional uh, kind of uh, all the nuisance is gone now, it's simple one table, you access the table, you do star join or you, what kind of joins you wanted to perform, you can do that on the table uh, by using HANA views if you are using mixed scenarios or if you are directly using BW system then which is also performance improved uh, a lot. So that's the strategy mm. for BW on HANA you got data store object load the data into InfoCube and then there and then in BW on HANA it is going to be InfoCube and no aggregates, no small cubes, no further data sets to improve the data performance because HANA can do compressions, so column stores automatically, so no aggregate, it does the aggregations automatically when the query is executed, so you don't need a subset of data. So even you can directly uh, do the data reporting from this place. Uh, so, so that's that's how BW on S4 HANA, oh sorry, BW on HANA, you can see that it's just the data store object and then your reporting can be done there. Okay, uh, so this is about DSOs and cubes in, in BW on HANA only. So now we're going to see tomorrow, we're going to see consuming HANA views in BW layer and um, and we, uh, we're going to see some of the BW4 HANA objects which are going to be open areas views in this topic. Okay, mm, yeah, so so that's it. So we, uh, we're going to see some of the BW1 HANA objects and some of the B4 which eventually turned, in, turned out to be a B4 HANA object also that is open areas view. Along with that we also see virtual providers which are only BW4 HANA objects, uh, but still we have to see that because many of the projects still running on BW1 HANA. So we're going to see BW, uh, virtual providers and open ODS views tomorrow. Uh, and also I will show you HANA optimized cubes in a system. These three different objects in a, um, in a system I'm going to show you. So then I will move on to advanced DS rules in the next. I'm going to stop this one here and then we connect back on Sunday night. Thank you.